Hi everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to set up Presonus Studio One DAW with your Tascam's Model 12 Digital Mixer as an audio interface. Before I show you in Studio One, I'm going to take a brief moment to talk about the Model 12. The Model 12 has 10 analog inputs, which can have combinations of eight microphones or seven microphones and one stereo line level, or six microphones and two stereo line levels, or even five stereo line levels, or any combination of that. Plus, we also get the stereo main bus being fed into the USB. So a total of 12 multi-channel audio into your PC, into your DAW, in this case, Studio One. Inside the red box is where your analog section is. We have 10 analog inputs, which includes the gain level and the filters, the low cut, instrument input selection, and so on. All the options inside the blue square are all digital. This includes the compressors, the equalizers, the auxiliary buses, the faders, knobs, buttons, effects, the sub, the main, everything inside that blue section is digital. The yellow bar is a point where each of the channels analog audio is converted to digital and it's fed to the USB output to your PC. And also it's the same point where the return of the USB back from your DAW into the mixer. And this is the raw audio feed of each of the channels. So any compression or EQ effects that you apply to each of the channel do not affect the audio being sent to Studio One. There is an option in the menu system where you can change that point to go post compression. So the USB feed going into your DAW will have the audio affected by the compressor for each of the channel. You can also change this point past the equalization as well. So you can have compression and equalization of each of the channel being fed to Studio One or your DAW affected by the settings of the compressor and your equalization. How to change this point is a topic for another video, but I would highly recommend that you leave it as a default feeding point to record raw audio. This way, if you ever play it back, then you are not doubling on the compression and the equalization for each of the channels. So simply, we feed all of our 10 channels plus the, the main output into Studio One, and we can also have 10 outputs, whether 10 mono or 5 stereo, feeding back into the channel at the same point, if you like to mix it down on the Model 12. Just a quick note that it is also possible to simultaneously record in Studio One as well as on the onboard multi-track recorder. So let's switch to Studio One and I'll show you how to set it up in Studio One to accept the 10 inputs as well as the 10 outputs plus the main. Here we are in Studio One. Let's uh, check that we've got our audio interface selected correctly. I've got Model Mixer. This is my default settings. Your settings might be a little bit different, but we can change the samples and the sampling rate as well by clicking on the control panel. And here we are, we can actually see we've got the Model 12 connected and the sample rate at 48 kilohertz, which is my default setting. And 64 samples works really great even with my old laptop. To set up the input and output matrix, we click here. By default, you might find that it's got few inputs and an output set up. So you have input left, right as stereo and input one and input two. And at the top, we can actually see how we have in one all the way to in 12. Input 11 and 12 referring to the main output of the Tascam Model 12. As to the output, this is the output being said, sent back to the Model 12 and we have 10 of them. So let's start setting it up with the inputs first. I can select and I'm just going to remove all of those even though it's complaining that they are being used in the project but I don't need them. So I'm going to add my eight inputs. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. This way, 
I have set up the matrix so that if I've got eight microphones connected, all I got to do is in my project, select inputs one to eight, whichever one I want to record, all mono. Next, I'm just going to add two stereo ones. And I'm going to call them input seven and eight. And the last one, I'm going to call it input nine and 10. And I'm going to reselect seven and eight and nine and 10 as my inputs. And then one more stereo as input main, which is going to be selected 11 and 12. So I'm just going to apply. So now I have eight microphone selections plus the two stereo line inputs that's available on the unit itself. So whenever I want to record eight microphones, I can select any of the eight microphone inputs. Whenever I'm recording stereo line level inputs, I can select seven and eight as well. Of course, there is nothing stopping you adding a stereo and calling it input one and two and selecting the inputs one and two as a stereo pair as well. So you could do that. That's the whole flexibility of the input matrix. Let's set up the output as well. Output, because on the unit itself, we have seven and eight and nine and 10 as stereo fader sliders, we can easily apply our main output to be output nine and 10. Let's apply that. And if you want to have a separate, let's say headphone output, you can add a stereo, call it sub, even a Qmix, and we can have that applied to seven and eight. So now we have two stereo faders, one being the main one going into our speakers and one output seven and eight being going to the headphones as a separate mix. Of course, we can also add now outputs um, one to six and we can call them out one. There we go. So we now have our main stereo output a Q output for our headphone mix for when we are uh, tracking vocals and they want to hear the backing track. Of course, you can still use main, but I prefer Q output. And then we have outputs one to six as well, available as outputs to feed back into our mixer. Now, one thing I should mention is that if you are like me and you have multiple audio interfaces, you can actually export this setup like you can see here and save it. As you can see, I have my FCA 1616 and my Yamaha AG03, as well as my Model 12 mixer available previously. So you don't have to redo this again. You can simply select import and import the audio interface you've got connected and you get the same setup back here as well. And you can also make this as your default setup so that any new project you create, you can make this setup of inputs and outputs as your default. So what does all this mean as far as the project? Well, let's have a look. In our projects, we can select our inputs and outputs. If you cannot see it, click here and here, IO connections. We can enable and disable it. So this way we can actually see it. So now for my um, this channel, I can select any of my inputs or stereo inputs, or mono inputs. And of course, for the out, not only our main, which is our uh, main fader right there, we can send it out to any of other outputs. Just going back into the setup, I named them input one, two, three, four. But if you permanently have your microphone connected to input one and your guitar to input two, you can call them microphone input, guitar input, my synthesizer input, my uh, sampler input, and so on. That way, when you are selecting on the channels, you can easily select your microphone input. You can easily select your guitar input, and so on. That way, it makes it really easy to see on each of the tracks that you are recording what inputs you are selecting. Well, I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, make sure you give me the thumbs up. And if you have any comments, any questions, feel free to use the comment section below to ask me all those questions and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. 
Until next time, as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. Catch you in the next one.